Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We all know Kanye West. He says he's the best. Well, I'm from Kanye East, and I am a beast. Uh, Kanye is a village in Botswana. Of course, some choose to call it a town based on its approximate 50,000 population. I say it is a village. Who am I to decide whether the place is a town or village? Well, to misandramara is the name on my identity documents. I was born and raised in Kanye, a village which until recently had a relatively low economy. Although electricity infrastructure was available, the majority of the residents were not connected to the electricity supply because their economic status did not allow them to. Most of the roads in the village were unpaved, which meant for people who lived on the rocky side, things were worse off. The beast happened to grow up on the rocky side, literally and metaphorically. From the time I was seven, I had to walk up a rocky hill to go to school. Of course, I was used to the steep climb up, although I remember I, wished, I used to wish my family had a bit more so I didn't have to walk through the rain because my dearest mother would never permit me to miss school on account of the rain. Parents. In 1994, when I was born, I had three brothers and three sisters. I bet both my parents were proud of me, the most beautiful baby ever born. <clears throat> Life was relatively comfortable because my father was able to provide for the family's essential needs. My siblings were all going to school, although two of them were almost finished. When you come on earth and all your siblings are going to school, you get bored. Which is why when I was four years old, my loving parents gave me a lovely brother with ears like Mickey Mouse. Sadly, Four months and eleven days after my brother's arrival, my father passed away. That monster, chronic renal failure, he ruined our lives. Although I do not remember my father that much, I know he was our breadwinner, our only breadwinner. My mother was left with nothing except the roof we had over our head. Life after my father's demise turned worse. My two eldest siblings joined the bread competition. As breadwinners, they were able to sustain the family. Years passed by and not so long after, I was in a classroom learning a funny language I had never known before, English. Meanwhile, our breadwinners started their own families, which meant the loaf of bread was now divided. For the first three years of my primary school, I used the same two shirts and two shorts, and I bet I would have used them for my entire seven-year primary education if the school uniform had not been changed when I went to fourth grade. For the winters, I used to wear my warm clothes, which were definitely not part of the school uniform. I vividly remember the winter of 2003 when I walked barefoot for two weeks on those sharp and cold rocks. Well, at least I was not alone. There were other kids with similar conditions. The capital city of Botswana is Gaborone, by far the most beautiful city I have ever seen, and maybe I will ever see. It was in April of 2005 when I consciously went there for the first time. I went there to visit my brother. I saw many fascinating things in the city I had never seen in the village. I saw a road with two lanes, traffic control lights, street lights, buildings with more than two floors, and many people. The shops were very big, and they sold many beautiful things. I felt like a king, eating diverse food with meat every day, and washing it down with a soft drink of some form. I even stopped listening to the radio, 
I mean, who would listen to the radio when you have a television? No one. I relocated to the city after twisting a few arms. Not that I had to twist any arms because my brother's family loved me so much they wanted me to stay. My new school had nice buildings. I didn't have rocks to walk on. I had a full school uniform and I studied with electric lights. Yes, electric lights. Not candle lights like at the village. I had an awesome teacher and awesome classmates. Even at our house, life was fairly good that I even helped by doing a few chores that any other 11 year old could do. But unlike any other 11 year old, I was soon promoted to the position of head of domestic services. It was at this point when life took a different direction. Ladies and gentlemen, when at 11, you are expected to cook for an entire family, tend to the garden, and look after a one-year-old baby while the parents are out at night, life becomes hard. You are forced to grow up prematurely. Things like playing become insignificant. Not that it made any difference to me because I was expected to go straight home after school and play with my nephew while my friends played. Of course, at times I disobeyed that rule. And by so doing, I would end myself a flogging. As was the reward for any less than perfect service in any of the duties in my job description. Even my academic performance was not as excellent as before. I tried to seek for help from my family, but there was nothing they could do because I was a naughty kid whose behavior was being corrected. The attempt to soil the name of my host had consequences. It was at this point that I decided to study hard and make something out of my life because my dearest mother had always told me that education was the only heritage that no one could ever steal away from me. Somehow I believed if I could be a doctor, everything would be just fine. In December of 2006, I was told to go home. Permanently. Ladies and gentlemen, I was the happiest person on earth. It felt good to be back in a place where it was not a crime to go play wherever I wanted, with whoever I wanted. The economic situation at home did not bother me much, despite being the opposite of how it was at that house. Although when I came, things were so bad that we were classified as destitute and we benefited from the government social welfare initiative. I must admit it helped my family through the tough times. But the stigma associated with being economically underprivileged was there. Nonetheless, it was better compared to the costly comfort I had in the city. In 2011, I encountered another obstacle. From 2006 until 2010, the government of Botswana undertook a double shift education system experiment the objective of which was to enable more students to finish senior secondary school within the limited resources. Here was a bad experiment. The schools where this experiment was run became so huge that controlling them was almost impossible and the rate of vandalism was very high. I mean, Botswana, as the best producer of beef, should have known that this was a bad experiment. Because when you take too many cattle and you put them in a small crawl, they damage the crawl. Well, Tepa Pizosina Secondary School was one of the schools where this experiment was run. It was also the same school where I was admitted to in 2011. Although when I was admitted, the experiment was already terminated, its effects were still there. And they were made worse by a national civil service strike which lasted for two months. Two months. Two months with no public service means two months with no teachers in public schools. Even after the strike, the teachers did not 
give the teaching their best. Most students didn't care. They even made learning difficult for the few who cared. As much as this was discouraging for most people, I formed a study group with some of the students who were serious, and we studied together every day after school and during the weekends. In the end, for those who hung on to the bumpy ride and myself, the examination results were more than satisfactory. Today, I attend an international school on a scholarship. I cannot say I'm successful, but I believe I am on the right path. Throughout my life, I have learned a few things which I hope at least one person will learn something from. I have learned about the importance of dreams in life. Throughout my life, I had a dream to make something out of my life and help my mother and my family. This dream has sustained me through all the hardships that I had to endure in life. So when you have a dream, it gives you something to fight for, even when everything appears hopeless. The second thing I learned is that when you do something you love, you get to enjoy life. Because I loved helping others, I started the study group at my previous school. And in the end, I reaped the good reward of excellent results. The third thing I learned is the need to be independent when making plans about one's future. As no one was able to come and rescue me during my domestic service, I learned that one can never fully count on people to be there at all times. Of course, that issue has long been resolved, and I have a good relationship with my brother and his family, something which has taught me that when you have issues with people and you resolve them, you both get to have a lovely and happy life. In conclusion, you are powerful. You can do whatever you want in life regardless of your present situation. It is your call. To let life's challenges crush you, like my peers who are in similar conditions and tend to drugs and crime, or to keep fighting. Ladies and gentlemen, if maybe you thought the story of your life was over, let this be the ink with which you rewrite it. Muchas gracias.